All right, our next video in the circle unit is secant, secant angles. So here we have two secants, secant SP and QR, and they are intersecting outside of the circle. And when that happens, we have some very interesting uh, stuff that's going on, really cool little formula here. The angle in question, angle one, all right, that angle right in there, is equal to the far away arc, so whatever this measure is in degrees, minus the close arc divided by two. So let's see if we can use that in a few examples. Number one. So again, angle equals far away arc minus close arc over 2. In this case the angle is missing. Far away arc is 150, close arc is 52 over 2. 150 minus 52 is 98 over 2 should be 49. 49 degrees. Number 2. See if you can try this one on your own. Angle equals far away arc minus close arc over two. In this case, the angle is given. 163 minus x over two. When we have an x in the numerator, what I like to do is multiply both sides by two. When we do that, we multiply the right side by 2 and the left side by 2. The twos cancel out. On the left we have 110. 163 minus x. We'll subtract 163 from both sides. <clears throat> so 110 minus 163. Uh, that is going to be negative 53 equals negative x. So 53 is x. And we can check that. You know, if we plug that back in here, we can check it. 55 should equal 163 minus 53 over 2. So 55 should equal 1, let's see, 163 minus 53. That is 110. 110 over 2 is 55. We can add some algebra in there as well. It doesn't change the formula though. Angle equals far away arc minus close arc over two. In this case, the angle is an algebraic expression. Far away arc is 16x minus eight minus the close arc is 40 over two. To multiply both sides by two, when you do that on the left-hand side, you have to put it in parentheses. Over here on the right, nothing's changed. The numerator doesn't change. A lot of people tend to think that if you multiply the whole right side by 2, then you multiply the top terms by 2. But all you want to do is just cancel those out. Over here, we're going to distribute. You get 12x minus 8, 16x minus, we'll combine those, minus 48. So let's see, we're going to subtract 12x from both sides. We get negative 8 equals 4x minus 48. Let's add 48 to both sides. So we get 40 equals 4 times x. x is 10. And again, you can plug that back in to see if it fits. Number 4. Last one. A little bit more complicated this time, but the formula remains the same. The angle is equal to the far away arc minus the close arc over 2. In this case, the angle is 53. The far away arc is 23x plus 9 minus. The close arc is a binomial, so we have to put it in parentheses. We put it in parentheses because of that minus sign in between them. It's actually going to change the sign of everything after it, so here we're going to have to distribute that minus sign after it. So I'm going to get 53 equals 
23x plus 9 minus 9x minus 1. That gets rid of the parentheses there. Multiply both sides by 2. <clears throat> we get 106. 106 is equal to... The numerator doesn't change. Let's combine like terms on the right. 23x minus 9x is 14x. Positive 9 minus 1 is positive 8. Subtract 8. We get 98 is equal to 14x. So let's see, 98 divided by 14, that's going to be 7x is 7. <clears throat> and I'll show you this check. We check that back in here. If we put x is 7 right there, 23 times 7, 23 times 7 plus 9. So that's 140 plus another 21, 161, 170. So that whole arc SE is 170, so the angle should be the far away arc minus the close arc. The close arc is uh, 9 times 7 plus 164 over 2. 170 minus 64. Uh, that's pretty easy. That's 106. So 53 should equal 106 over 2. And it does. So there you go. Real quick video on secant secant angles. Next up will be secant secant segments. And then we'll do, we'll move into some tangent stuff.